I remember many years ago when a fundraising consultant came to the church that I served at the time. And one of the things that he said was, you can tell what you really love by looking at your checkbook. I said this was many years ago. This was back when I kept track of what I spent my money on in my checkbook register rather than online. And so I did that. I went and I looked back in my checkbook register to see what it was that I loved, what it was that I spent my money on. It turns out that what I really love is a food, particularly food that other people make, and my house. Now, to be fair, the house that I lived in at the time was very much a fixer-upper. There was a lot of work to be done. But it's also true, all these years later, when you get right down to it, what I love beyond my family and my community and all that, what I spend my money on is largely food and my house. I confess it, I am a homebody. I'm a nester. I don't mean that I'm like really good at all those domestic things like cleaning and cooking and decorating. I have no particular gifts in that department. I mean, I like to be at home. I love the fact that I work from home. I like to be comfortable in that nest of my home. I like to imagine going on vacation to exotic places, but when it really comes down to reality, that sounds like spending a lot of time away from my dogs, and uh, somehow I just never kind of get around to it. And I know that that is a place of enormous privilege. It's nothing particularly to be proud of. The people I admire are the people like my friend Sharon, who sold everything she had and her lovely home and quit her corporate job so that she could spend a year traveling around the country dancing, and then she went to teach with AmeriCorps. That's admirable. My love of being here, in my place of comfort, isn't anything that I'm particularly proud of. I think of what Meg said a couple of weeks ago about home being a place where you can embrace discomfort, or a place where you can handle conflict, where you can be on the edge of change and growth. And that is so true and so right. And yet, I love my comfortable bed. I love my comfortable house. And although periodically my wife says, you know, I should really retire and we should sell everything and live in an RV and travel around and that sounds really great for a couple of minutes, it turns out that three large or soon to be large dogs in an RV doesn't sound like all that great of a plan. And so there I am, at home. But I think there are things to be said in favor of home, in favor of homemakers, in favor of home bodies. I think of Wendell Berry, who's been farming his land in Kentucky for decades now, whose children are there moving into generations of rootedness and sustainability and connection of knowing the land really completely, literally from the ground up. And I think that there's something in that that's really terribly beautiful. And I think about one of my children's story favorites, a story called The Big Orange Spot by Daniel Pinkwater. And in this story, Mr. Plumbean lives on a neat street. And all the houses look the same, until one day, for no discernible reason, a seagull drops a can of orange paint on Mr. Plumbean's house. Well, the neighbors are aghast, and they keep waiting for Mr. Plumbean to paint it over and make their street a neat street once again. But he just leaves it there. And so finally they confront him and they say, Mr. Plumbean, you have got to do something about your house. This used to be a neat street. So he says, okay. And that evening, he goes to the store and he buys paint. And he 
doesn't paint over the big orange splot, he paints more orange splots, big ones and little ones, and then he gets all kinds of colors of paint, and he paints his house in a rainbow, and he builds a tower and paints a clock face on it, and he buys baobabs and palm trees and plants them in front of his house and hangs a hammock, and he lies out there in his hammock in front of his rainbow explosion house with lemonade and an alligator. Now, not surprisingly, the neighbors flip out. They're aghast and they're horrified, and eventually they start delegating people to come over to Mr. Plumbean's house to talk sense to him. And one by one, the neighbors come over and they spend the evening talking to Mr. Plumbean, sitting in his hammock, drinking lemonade. And Mr. Plumbean says to them, my house is me, and I am it. My house is where I like to be, and it looks like all my dreams. And after each conversation, each neighbor goes back and they transform their own house to look like all their dreams. And one house looks like a rocket ship and one house looks like a sailboat. And the street is transformed house by house as people begin to say, my house is me and I am it. My house is where I like to be and it looks like all my dreams. That's homebodies. And I like to imagine that kind of a world where we can talk to one another from that place of loving where we are, of owning where we are, of building a place that looks like all our dreams. I imagine a world of those conversations, knowing that not all of us get to have all of our dreams, knowing that some of us have an unfairly easier time achieving all of our dreams, and yet all of us at least have the right to that conversation. That way of thinking about where we are, where we live, our street, our community, our world home, and how we make a place for each of us individually and all of us together to truly feel at home, to feel that my house is me, and to build a world that looks like all of our dreams.